What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope all you're having a great day. Hope all you're having a great week. Uh, hope all is well throughout all of this craziness that's continuing to go on in the world. Um, hopefully, we can all get back to normal soon. Very soon. Because I'm sick of all of this mess that's going on. Um, it's been a trying time. You know, it's been stressful. But... I hope all you are doing well and coping. Um, today is another retro review. This is General Hospital, April 1st, 2008. I It's funny because I remember this episode. A lot of these episodes I remember like it was yesterday. And this is like a 12-year-old episode. And I remember it like it was yesterday. Cause I remember watching this one live when it happened. Um... A lot was going on during this time. A lot was going on in this episode. Um, so I'm going to try and get through it person by person, scene by scene. Um, Robin was doing way too much during this time because this is when she was pregnant with um, Emma. And technically, her and Patrick weren't really a couple at this time, like not in a relationship. Um and Patrick, of course, was trying to change that, but Robin was being too much. Like, she was being difficult because Robin is so independent and she wanted to maintain her independent, you know, her her being independent. She wanted to maintain that. So she kept trying to convince herself and everybody else, oh, I don't need a man for nothing. I don't need a man. I don't need a man. Robin, stop it. Robin was doing way too much. So Elizabeth, they all at the hospital. Elizabeth comes in with Cameron and Jake. Cameron and Jake were so small. Like Cameron, Jake was just a baby. Cameron was so little. Um, <laughs> so it was funny seeing all of this. And the hospital design, of course, was different. Um, so she wanted Robin to watch the kids real quick while she ran to her locker to go get something. And Cameron was a handful. Like he took her stethoscope, running around playing with it. She kept trying to get it back. She kept, Robin kept asking Patrick and Epiphany for help, and Patrick and Epiphany was not helping her. They were standing right here like, nope, you wanted to be a mom, you got to get used to it, you're about to be a mother, you need to learn how to handle these kids. She was like, yeah, but it's not like I'm going to be giving birth to two fully grown kids. <laughs> Patrick was like, nope, you want to be a mom, you're a mom, you know, you got to get used to it, um, dealing with kids, and you want to be independent, so you independent, so handle your business. And she kept trying to get the stethoscope from Cameron. Cameron was not budging. Then she tried to bribe him with ice cream and sprinkles, and he still wasn't budging. So, of course, Elizabeth came back, and, you know, he gave up the stethoscope, and she made him apologize to Robin. <laughs> it was funny because seeing Robin trying to, you know, hold Jake in one hand and get the stethoscope in another, and then her belly all popping out because she's pregnant. It was hilarious. And she kind of mad at Patrick and them for just standing there not helping. I'm like, I wouldn't have helped you either. You want to run around talking about you Miss Independent. You could do this and do that. You don't need nobody help. So I'm gonna give you what you been saying. You know, I'm gonna get you what give you what you've been asking for. You didn't want the help. You ain't getting no help. It is what it is. Um. So later on, her and Elizabeth was having this conversation, and she was admiring Elizabeth for doing all of this by herself, basically. You know, handling two kids, working a full time job as a nurse running a household, you know, because she made it look easy. And Elizabeth had to drop some knowledge on Robin. She was like, yeah, you know, I make it look easy, but trust me, it's not easy. She was like, I burnt the oatmeal this morning. I got mad at Cameron. She said, I, I lost my keys. Like, it was just a lot going on. But yeah, she make it look easy because she's gotten used to it. But it's still not easy. Because at the end of the day, Robin only gets a glimpse of what Elizabeth deals with with a job and kids and running a household you only get a small glimpse of that you're not there 24 7 so you don't know the ins and outs you know and elizabeth told her yeah it's not easy you know it's not but she manages you know and robin basically was trying to get on her oh i don't need a man for nothing you know little uh stick or whatever and elizabeth was like you know that's all fine and well that you don't need no man but at the end of the day it doesn't hurt to have one you know what I'm saying? Like you still, you know, want a companion, somebody to be there to share your life with, share your day, share the responsibilities with, you know what I'm saying? Why should you have to raise kids and do all of this by yourself if you don't have to? 
like Elizabeth was dropping some some knowledge on her. Then Robin, of course, was getting in her business, asking her about Jason and stuff and Lucky. And Elizabeth was like, you know, her and Lucky were done. She was like, we're not getting back together. You know, um, things with Jason was whatever. Um, I think her conversation with Elizabeth made her realize that it's not anything wrong. It's nothing wrong with wanting it all. The kids, the career, the, you know, the spouse, there's nothing wrong with that. You can have it all. Is it a juggling act? Yeah, but you can have it all. And it made Robin realize that. So when her and Patrick were talking, Patrick was like, okay, let me take you out on a date or whatever. And, you know, she she finally started putting her walls down and stuff that she built up. And she told Patrick, she's like, okay, what time are you picking me up? I was happy because I'm like, it's about time, Robin. Like, get out of your own damn way. Like, you have a man who not only wants to be with you, but wants to be a father to that child. You know how many people want that, but don't have that because the guy typically don't want to be a father. Like they just leave you to raise the child and have a career all by yourself and make you do all of it alone. Patrick was a different type of person. He wasn't about to do that. He, he stepped up to take care of his responsibilities and she should have been happy about that instead of being, you know, a little biatch about it. You know, I love me some Robin, but she was doing too much during this time with all this, I, I, you know, I'm independent and all that. There's nothing wrong with being independent. There's nothing wrong with that. But stop acting like you don't need nothing to nobody because eventually, <laughs> yes, you do. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, not saying that you need a man, but the fact is, you know that you want one. You know what I'm saying? There's a big difference between need and want. And that's what, you know, that's what Robin needed to understand. So I'm happy, you know, they finally setting up their date and she finally, you know, got, you know, got out of her own way because that's what she needed to do. Um, So anyway, moving on from that. Maxie and Lulu, the saga continues. This was during a time where they both were assistants for Kate Howard and Kate had just started Crimson. She didn't have an office yet, so she was running the business out, out of her house. Um, so basically Lulu and Maxie were in constant competition with each other to prove who was the better assistant or whatever, who was more fit for this industry. Lulu surprisingly was killing it at the, at work. You know, she was killing it even though, and the funny thing was Lulu didn't really even want that job. She didn't want that fashion career. She didn't want none of that, but she was doing a good job. Whereas Maxie was making some mistakes and stuff. And of course, Kate was chewing her out about it because of effects that never went through. And Maxie was like, well, I did it as you instructed. She was like, okay, we'll get on the phone and make it happen. And Maxie, of course, was pissed because Kate sent Lulu to go pick up um, a sketch, a sketchbook from a famous designer or whatever, upcoming, you know, a designer, I guess, who had a lot of buzz behind his name. And Lulu didn't even know who the hell the designer name, she didn't even know who he was. And Maxie was irritated by it. And so, of course, Maxie got schooled by Kate because Maxie kept talking about, oh, why did you send Lulu? She didn't even know who the designer was. Kate said, so what? And Kate had to school Maxie because Maxie thought she was the shit because she's a fashionista. She knows all about fashion, the latest trends, the designers. She knows this, that, and the third. That's all fine and well. But Kate had to school her because at the end of the day, yeah, you may know all of these things, but what you don't know is business. That's what Maxie was lacking. Business skills, a business mind. Like you're smart when it comes to fashion, the latest trends, how to get cer certain things done and who these designers are, but you need to understand the business side of it. You know what I'm saying? I think that's where some people mess up in a certain industry. You don't know the business end of it. You know what I mean? And like she told her, there's always going to be somebody trying to take your spot. There's always going to be somebody trying to, you know, stab you in the back. You might have all these people in the industry who smile in your face and say, oh, congratulations. Oh, you're great. You do this, do that. But meanwhile, they're all kissing your ass in your face. But behind your back, they're plotting. You know what I'm saying? Like Kate really had to school her. And I do feel like Maxie underestimated Lulu. Like, yeah, Lulu didn't know jack shit about fashion, which is true. She didn't know nothing about fashion, nothing about the latest trends, nothing about designers and what's hot and what's not. She didn't know anything about that. But at the end of the day, Lulu knows how to work. You know what I'm saying? Lulu knows how to take direction at her job. 
And that's exactly what Lulu did. Kate told her to do this and do that. She got it done. You know what I mean? You don't have to have a passion for something to get it done. I do that at my job all the time. I don't have a passion at my job. I don't dream of being the boss there because I don't want to be a boss there. I want to be a boss somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? But I know how to get the job done. You know, that's just what I do. And that's what Lulu does. She knows how to get the job done. Um, and it was getting under Maxie's skin. But I'm like, Maxie needs to learn how to figure out a way to get her mojo back and learn the business side of things and how to get things done. And if you watch current episodes of GH, you know, obviously, she knows now how to get it done. So obviously, Kate's words made sense to her and it didn't just go in one ear and out the other. Maxie grew up. You know what I'm saying? She finally learned the business end of fashion. And that's not just about fashion. You got to know the business side to it, too. You know, that's like the music business, all of that stuff. At the end of the day, it has business at the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could be a rapper, you could be a singer, you could be whatever. But you need to know the business side to it. You got to know it. Um, In order to really succeed. I don't care what you know as far as music, fashion, what's hot, what's not. doesn't matter. You still got to know the business end of it. That's what you have to know. So, of course, her and Lulu get into it or whatever because Lulu doesn't want to watch the designer's dog. And Maxie was like, well, you're second assistant. I'm first assistant, so you have to do what I'm telling you to do right now. So, get to watching the dog. So, Lulu basically was telling Maxie she was sending out the wrong packages to the wrong places. Like you were sending out packages to the wrong places and Maxie was pissed. Cause she was like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. So of course Maxie knew, yeah, you were sending out the wrong packages. <laughs> so of course she had to get Spinelli's help because he's smart. And she was like, I need to know what country is this and what country is that. So I know what I'm sending is, you know, going to the right place. Spinelli was like, so basically you called me here to be your little tour guy. <laughs> I was like, basically bro. That's what she called you for, to be her guide. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, I felt super bad for Monica. Monica was just going through. Um, today was the first day of her trial, her court date, because if you remember after Monica, if you remember after Alan and Emily died, Monica just lost complete control. She started drinking heavenly. Then she started driving and drinking. She hit Sam. Um, while she was intoxicated, so that's why she's in court now for reckless endangerment, um, leaving the scene of an accident, driving under the influence. So those are just, you know, the beginning charges for her. So, of course, Diane is her attorney. And, um, you know, Nicholas was talking to Alexis to see if the DA's office, because at this time, Alexis was the district attorney, trying to see if the DA's office could go easy on Monica or whatever. You know, some type of community service, something. And Alexis told him, she was she was like, you know, I'm not trying to punish her. You know, obviously she needs the help and I want to see that she gets the help. So I'm not going to go hard on her. Um, But she also cautioned Nicholas to get some help, too, regarding Emily, because Nicholas's life has been going downhill, too, since Emily died. So she advised him to do the same thing. Get some help. Go to a therapist. Do what you got to do. Um. So they get into the courtroom. Tracy and Edward show up. Tracy tries talking to uh, Sam or whatever, trying to tell her, oh, I don't trust you. Don't pull no tricks or whatever, you know. And Edward basically had to come over and, and apologize on Tracy's behalf because Tracy was, you know, acting foolish as she normally does. It was so good seeing Tracy and Edward. Oh, my God. It was it was amazing seeing them. Um. I just felt super bad for Monica because that woman has been through a lot because at this point she lost AJ and this was before AJ was resurrected again. So she lost AJ. She lost her oldest child, Dawn. She lost Alan. She lost Emily. Like she just had a lot of loss in her life. Like, so I could see why she just turned to the bottle. It doesn't make it okay, but I could see why, you know, with all that loss, I mean, it'd make anybody probably lose their marble. Um, and self-destruct. So when they get up in the courtroom, Monica tried talking to Sam and stuff, but then the judge comes in and she pleads no contest. Um, she wants to do six months of community service, 
go to a treatment program and the DA's office had no problem with it. Alexis was like, I'm good with that. But of course the judge was like, well, y'all might be good with it, but I'm not good with it because the judge felt like what Monica did was so serious and it shouldn't be taken lightly. And I do agree with the judge that I agree with. You know what I mean? Like he wanted to kind of, it was obvious the judge wanted to make an example out of Monica, but I was also happy that everybody stood up and, you know, talked on behalf for Monica you know, you had Diane there speaking on her behalf. Alexis was speaking. You know, Nicholas was speaking up, you know, about her loss. And Sam jumped up and basically told the judge, like, look, yeah, what she did was wrong, but I'm I'm good. I'm all right. And I'm not pressing charges. And the judge was like, you know, that's very generous of you. But the judge felt like it was too generous of Sam not to press charges. And it was obvious that that judge wanted to make an example out of Monica due to her status. Because obviously she's a quarter man. She comes from, you know, she got wealth. She's also chief of staff. So he held her up to a higher standard, you know, so it's clear that he wanted to make an example. But I think it was Nicholas and Sam's pleas and stuff that kind of, you know, may convince the judge to, you know, give, go, go easy on Monica. Um, because they, you know, she lost a lot, but I do agree with the judge just because, you know, you went through a loss. Everybody has suffered loss. That doesn't give you the right to get behind the wheel, start drinking, hitting people because you're not only endangering your life, you're endangering others. And that's not cool, which I do agree with the judge on that. one. So we shall see what the outcome is going to be with the judge. Um, so moving on from that, <clears throat> It was super funny when Tracy was outside the door listening to Luke groaning and moaning and stuff because she thought Luke was up in there getting busy. Luke was in there basically doing physical therapy with uh, Alice. Alice was putting him through it. And it was super hilarious. And Tracy uh, basically told Alice, don't go easy on him. Luke was too through. This was after Luke had his heart attack and stuff like that. Luke was just through. Luke was like, bruh, I can't do this no more. <laughs> <laughs> so of course Sonny come up in there and him and Alice take a little break I still get irritated seeing Sonny come through that door every time I see Sonny in the quarter main mansion I get aggravated because he should not be there um so Luke basically was giving Sonny the rundown on what's going on with the Zakaras um basically saying how Claudia was asking Luke all these questions about Sonny where he's vulnerable trying to find out basically where Sonny's most vulnerable, um, just asking all these questions. And Luke basically told Claudia, like, yeah, going up against Sonny, I wouldn't, I would advise you not to do it. But Sonny seems like he's not all that worried about the Zakaras or whatever, because they got this truce. I'm like, Sonny, stop being stupid. Sonny was so dumb during this time. <laughs> he was so naive for a mob boss. I'm like, just because you got a truce with them, so what? You don't know these people. Just because you will uphold the truths don't mean they will you know what i'm saying like come on stop being naive to this and luke kept trying to warn him he was like you better watch out for these women scorn because it'll bite you in the ass and you know luke was like i know he was like you better watch your back um so speaking of the zakaris um johnny was on the phone or whatever trying to tell whoever basically you know f get some dirt on sunny find out where he's vulnerable that's what I'm talking about. When Johnny was on the phone trying to find dirt on Sonny, I'm like, see, this is why Sonny was stupid. I'm like, Sonny, come on now. This truce that you think you have with them is not going to work. Like, they're sitting here trying to find out where you're vulnerable, find, trying to find dirt. Obviously, the truce was a ploy on their part to get you comfortable, to make you think that they're not going to make a move. So that way, when you let your guard down, they're going to make a move. Duh. Like, stop being so damn naive. Like, what are you doing? It was so good seeing Johnny and Claudia. I freaking miss the Zakaras immensely. Like, I miss them so much. Like, this time was so great watching because it was a good mob war brewing. You know, Sonny was trying to tell Luke, oh, no, ain't no mob war going to happen because we got a truce. Sonny, shut up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like just, just shut your mouth. Shush, shush, shush. That little truce ain't going to last. You should have known that. Um... So Claudia comes in here wondering where Johnny was last night, thinking that he was with Lulu, but he was like, nah, I wasn't with Lulu last night or whatever. Um, then they started reminiscing about when they were kids or whatever, and they was watching zombie movies. 
I still cannot believe Ron Carlevati changed the storyline and made Claudia Johnny's mother. That, to me, was the dumbest shit you could have done. Why? They were better off brother and sister. There was no point in making Johnny her son. Like, that was just, no. I never liked that storyline. I never liked it. I didn't like that they reconned it. I didn't like it. I never liked it. Um... So basically, Johnny has some news, not so good news for Claudia. He found out through one of the guards at the prison that they have on a uh, payroll that Rick Lansing visited Anthony and is trying to get Anthony released. And the doctors there are trying to say that Anthony is schizophrenic or whatever. Claudia was pissed. Claudia was like, hell no, we need to do something to make sure Anthony old ass stay up in prison because there's no way he need to get out of prison. I don't blame Claudia because Anthony was psychotic as hell. So I don't blame her for wanting to make do something to keep his old ass up in there because that man is just old, bitter, and crazy. And that's a bad combination. Like, that man was all type of psychotic, walking around talking to plants and whatnot. That man crazy as all get out. Like, Claudia was not here for it. Um. So anyway, Johnny showed up at the mansion wanting to talk to Luke about investing in the Haunted Star. And Luke was like, hell no. Luke was like, bruh. If you think I'm about to, you know, get in bed with you and the Zakaras to go against Sonny, he said it ain't going to happen, so you're wasting your time. And Johnny was like, no, it ain't got nothing to do with Sonny. So Luke figured it out. He was like, so if it ain't got nothing to do with Sonny, you're investing in my club because you want to be closer to Lulu. And when he said that, Lulu was actually standing right there in the doorway listening. I said, of course. This was one of my favorite times. I swear it was one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorite episodes like from the 80s and 90s and 2000s, but this was definitely one of my favorite times on the show. Um, so anyway, Jack showed up to the um, to the coffee warehouse or whatever. Sonny was there talking about he want to oversee the coffee shipments and stuff. So Jax came in there wanting to talk to Sonny about limiting, limiting his time his visits with Michael and Morgan and of course Sonny was not here for it Carly popped up she showed up and Sonny was wondering if Cla if Carly was on board with what Jax was talking about Carly felt like she didn't want Sonny to be out of the picture with the kids I don't think that's what Jax wanted either I mean Jax just didn't want Sonny around every day with the kids because he felt it was dangerous especially with the Zakaras in town you know he just felt like Sonny was deluding himself and I had to agree with Jax I know some people might say, oh, Jax was out of line for talking to Sonny about those kids or whatever because they're not his kids, but those are his stepkids. So he does, I agree with Carly on that. As a step parent, you do get a say. Like, you do get an opinion. You know what I mean? And Jax knows how dangerous Sonny's lifestyle is. He knows it. And he knew those kids would be a target. That he knew too. And I feel like Sonny was deluding himself and being all delusional and naive thinking that he could keep them kids safe. Like, you really can't because you don't know what your enemies are going to do. These enemies have no, they don't, they have no morals. They don't care. They will go after your kids. You know what I'm saying? You can't control what they will do. And that's where Sonny was stupid at. Like, you kept deluding yourself thinking, oh, I can protect my kids. Look at all the shit that they've been through already. And you couldn't protect them. I don't care how many guards you hire. It ain't going to do you justice. You know what I'm saying? So I think Carly should have limited his visitations and stuff like you should have. That would have been smart on your part. You know what I mean? Like, get them kids away from him. You know? Like, he could still have some visits, but not every day, all day. Hell no. I think that was a little stupid on her end. And, of course, Sonny didn't want to hear nothing Jax had to say. So, of course, Jax and Carly left. They went to the Metro Court, and Jax is, you know, still pissed about it or whatever. Um... Kate Howard showed up because she had a meeting with Jax about office space and Carly was, of course, pissed because her and Jax were talking and she felt like it was rude of Kate to just walk up and interrupt their conversation. Um, Carly don't like no woman. Carly really don't like no chick that comes near Sonny or Jax or Jason for that matter. She just marks her territory. And then she got mad when one of, I guess, the manager of the hotel, Marty or whatever, came up and showed her the guest reservations and stuff, all the, all the reservations that they booked for the hotel until she saw Kate Howard's name and saw that Crimson booked the uh, restaurant for um, the Metro, for the, the uh, Crimson launch party. And she was pissed about it because 
the Metro court wasn't charging Kate or Crimson for the party and it, they were going to do it for free. But like the manager told her, that was Jax's decision to do that. Because think about it, Jax is co-owner of the Metro court and he's a partner in Crimson. So of course he wasn't going to charge the company for the space. But Carly was pissed about it. Part of me can't blame Carly because as a business person, I would have been pissed too because we're in the business of making money. But at the same time, Jax wouldn't have done that if he didn't think the Metro Court could afford it. You know what I mean? Like in all the guests that y'all booked, it's going to easily cover that cost. Plus all the publicity that y'all are going to get. Carly talking about, oh, but what if the magazine goes bust? What good is that going to do us? It's still going to do you some good because at the end of the day, think of all the journalists and reporters that you're going to have at the party. Or the media coverage that you're going to get for the party. That the Metro Court will get for the party. Think about that. That's what. That's why Jax did what he did. Carly was so jealous of Kate. Like, Jax wasn't even thinking about Kate in that way. He really wasn't. He was all about Carly. But Carly's insecurities is what... Like, if you keep pushing somebody to do something, or accusing, or this, that, and third, eventually they're going to just say fuck it and go do it. You know what I'm saying? Carly was just so insecure. She just had to mark her territory with everybody. So... Claudia came up in there ordering herself a drink and Carly immediately comes over there, takes the drink, talking about, oh, get out of my restaurant, get out of my hotel. I can I can refuse you service. See, Carly was not a smart businesswoman. I understand you don't like people like Kate. You don't like people like Claudia. I get it. But at the end of the day, I will. I might not like you, but I damn sure will take your money. You know what I'm saying? I'm running a business. If you want to order a drink, some food, whatever, I'm going to charge you. I'm going to make money. Even if I don't like you, I, 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 hey, money ain't got no owners, only spenders. So she want to come spend her coin or whatever in my establishment, even though I don't like your ass, I will gladly take your money. See, that's where Carly be messing up. You got to think like a business person. Stop using your emotions to run your business. That was just dumb. So anyway, Kate, of course, went to go see Sonny or whatever. They start kissing and talking and I think deep down Kate knew Jax and everybody else was right that Sonny shouldn't be around the boys as much because of his business. But she just, of course, she wasn't going to say that to Sonny. I never really liked Kate and Sonny together. I just felt like there was not much chemistry between them. I know some people might have liked them together, but for me, I didn't. I didn't care for them one way or the other as a couple. I really did not at all care for them as a couple. But anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought. And I will see y'all all later. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. See you all later. Peace.